because we're talking about things that are really integral. And I did want to mention play mm-hmm. um, because play is something that's talked about in lots of school spaces and is in wonderful in lots of school spaces, but is so integral to us across the whole school mm. um, that play is fundamentally a part of our programs, a part of our culture from the time they are little babies walking around in the space to the time that they are 12 year olds leaving. It's not just an early childhood space for play and that we really value and recognize the way play changes over time and how it's used. And our children are incredibly playful in the way they use curriculum as well. Mm. Our teachers as well. Uh, We did not this Friday because that was World B Day, but the previous Friday, the kids wanted to do the Hunger Games and I'm like, mm, oh. that's a little bit risky for our little, <laughs> little five-year-olds. But we turned it into this, well, there's some other kids who had questions about food, insecurity, because we take a li- mm. long list of interests and we're like, let's marry these two and let's make this ah. kind of incredible whole school game, which we do a lot. We do a lot of whole school playing games, setting up the framework and then seeing what they come up with. And so we did a day that we did the Hungry Games and we had ah. three four tribes so there was a hill tribe a snowy mountain tribe all different biomes which they love because it's minecrafty right. <laughs> and, and so we all had to go into these biomes and make shelters make food make a culture and then learn that actually we didn't have enough food for the for the constructs of this game they didn't have enough food for the tribes to survive unless mm. they found connections with the other cultures and so it was this collaborative game where they had to get their tribe working well but then find a way to physically connect with other tribes that were all around the space and so we built roads and structures and then had to to learn how to trade and um, it went for probably three or four hours and at the end Mm. of it the games we all managed to get all the different food groups together and and win (laughs) the games but that was just a little example we use whole school play a lot Mm. like we we use kind of opportunities to engage whole body whole school actions in play we have entire weeks that we do the whole school becomes a town and we run businesses and there's natural disasters and Mm. we have to adapt to things and we use a lot of that kind of dramatic play in our work we also do you know obviously there's physical play every day there's you know multi-age play we start our day with time that is just brain breakfast, getting your brain Mm. ready for school, but it's really just opportunities to play across the whole school with physical games and dramatic play games and creative play and art play. And so, yeah, I just think it's really important. When we we talk about our school, we talk about community and play and democracy as being Mm -hmm. the three pillars of what we do. What were those again? Community, play and democracy. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. So I've kind of, I was like, oh, I've touched on the other two. Make sure we get play in there. Right, right, right. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.